usipati mkuu hapa na founder and chief executive of Southern African Women in Leadership it is such an honor to have you amongst the 32 trail blazers who are our inaugural finalists for for the 2020 Sawal Trail Blazers Awards uh what a trail blazer that you are so congratulations from my side it really is an honor and i am from one moment to another I'm very proud of the work that you do particularly in corporate south in africa so um, you could just tell us a little bit about mzinga who are you what are you all about and how did you manage all these amazing years of trail blazing corporate south in africa well thank you so much uh sepati and andy and i hope i'm pronouncing it well sepati uh, and, and and your, and your name does sound a combination of south african and zambian Cause Tembo is Zambian, I must say. So I am married to a Zambian man. <laughs> is it okay? <laughs> That's good. Then I, I can confidently say you are well taken care of, Thank and you. Uh, <laughs> and and you also do your part. So which is good. So um, so, so in terms of just coming back to the question, I, I mean I must say when you look at my life and how I've ended up here. and how long it's taken me i'm actually writing a book and the book it's called is called braving the odds and uh it will be published um you know at the beginning of next year so the point is my life uh, the answer is so long that i needed to write a book uh because i've been through just to summarize a bit you know i started as a nurse i started my career as a nurse and uh from nursing I I did nursing for about 2 years and I actually failed as a nurse. So and it took time for me to actually say I have failed as a nurse uh simply because I, nursing at the time when you fail it had a lot of embarrassment. How does one fail as a nurse? So from there I moved on to banking uh you know as a clerk just starting you know at the very bottom of the pyramid and then my parents said you need you need to go and study banking. uh you know if you have to make it in the corporate world and my point was if i can fail as a nurse would i really persevere uh, to do to to even pass the banking exams uh, for me it was like an impossible ask but i moved from there and became you know uh, uh, you know I, i remember when i finished my certificate because i had to start from scratch in the uk I, i you know i i i actually got an acknowledgement from the president of the institute that I was in the top 20 globally you know i had, i passed so well having failed nursing for me nursing and i always say you fail once and you rise three times it just gave me the view that even if you fail something once you can still achieve and from then on life has never been the same for me because i've just been like excelling at everything that i do uh i went on to complete my my banking degree in record times and then i went on to do my mba uh and um uh you know and then i joined the 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 industry of banking uh I, i've worked in so many countries um i've worked you know i've done different jobs you know global roles uh, regional roles you know i've been a ceo since 2008 uh so i do different ceo roles i've been ceo at standard chartered i was the first woman ceo in the can in the you know in africa i was the first woman ceo black woman ceo here in zambia for standard chartered then i went on to manage another bank in tanzania then i went to manage i i south africa i love south africa i'm a resident in south africa because i actually lived in south africa and I was managing the country in terms of coordinating and now i'm managing absa bank are here so um i just thank god every day i thank god because he's just been so precious and so faithful to me uh, that i missed all that okay that's my daughter behind <laughs> we are in her space so that's okay yeah, yeah. so I've, 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 i've even got little ones you know i've got my daughter she's 11 and my son is 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 18 and a half so so i missed all this as a mother uh you know I'm, i'm a wife um yeah and i'm a ceo from one meeting to the other that's all i ever do and that's my story mm-hmm. you should buy the book you know the glass ceiling is it, it, it the glass ceiling in my view is created uh, to be broken and that's why it's glass 
It's glass because it can be broken. Uh, otherwise, it should have been steel. If it was steel or if it was wood, would be worried, right? Because, you know, then you're like, I would never get there. So my, my advice to every woman is that don't look at where you're coming from. Look at where you're going. Mm. Don't worry if you have failed in life. I have failed. And I can proudly say, and I say it to encourage others, to tell them that you don't always have to, you know, a career, uh, which is whether you're an entrepreneur or, or whether you, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are in the corporate world, as a woman, you need to appreciate that it's going to be a bumpy road, but a bumpy road only leads to success. And I always tell a story about Joseph in the Bible. So with Joseph in the Bible, he had to fail so many times. He even ended up being a prisoner before he got to be the boss in the, you know, to, to be the biggest boss in the land. So for every woman out there, you can make it. Don't look at your failures or your challenges or the inability to even get financing to do your businesses as a failure. Look at it as this is what's going to make me break the glass ceiling because I've been tested. When you've been tested, there's nothing can stop you from doing anything. And yeah, so that's my advice. It's a bumpy road, but it's exciting. Welcome the bumps. Don't waste the failure. Don't waste an opportunity. The opportunity only gets you to the next level. So when you look at working in the boardroom and uh, really getting a lot more diversity in the boardroom, I think firstly, we need to raise awareness for the women to put their hands up, for the women to put their hands up that we can actually get onto the board. Many a times, one of the biggest challenges that we have, I have in my current business, is not hiring executives, but it's hiring board members, uh, just because there are not many. And when you go to say, we want to hire women, uh, women board members, you find that not many women yeah. refer each other, not many women uh, uh, you know, are ready uh, to put up their hand and say, I can actually serve on the board. So I think there's two sides. There's firstly awareness with the women themselves, you know, to be aware that you can actually get to the board. And there are a number of board institutes that are being run, uh, you know, on the, on the continent where they're encouraging you to go there and learn what it means to be a board member. I think that's one. And I think I learned myself that some of the best ways to get on the board is to volunteer, to actually be on those boards that don't even pay you money. So maybe say an NGO and say, I'm going to come there and I'll be a board member. And, and it's not for the money, it's for the experience. Mm -hmm. Because then when you are looking for, you know, an opportunity, it will be easier for you to say, I have this experience. And it's also even for the companies, for us to raise our 